Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video today. Today is going to be another episode of the Pez My Club Road to Glory. But in this episode, we're going to be trying out uh, the head-to-head -head version of the game. The reason why I wanted to try out the head-to-head -head version of the game was because I wanted to understand what formations and tactics work best for me. So after playing the head-to-head -head version of this game, which allows you to use Manchester City, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Manchester United, which, by the way, as you guys will notice that I don't have uh, the license for the game right now, uh, or the I don't have the option uh, the, the option file for the game installed just yet when I recorded this, but I did end up putting the option file in the game uh, just yesterday, actually. It takes a while to put the teams, actually, in. Uh, it takes, like, a solid, like, 10 or so minutes, possibly, so I didn't think it was going to take that long, but... Uh, obviously, it has to put all the teams in, which is awesome. So it's such a weird thing because people worry about the license issue so much in Pez. By the way, I couldn't care less about the stadiums in the game. But the, the kits and stuff, uh, I'm not sure if they actually put the stadiums in the game. I didn't actually check to see if that was actually a thing. But uh, in regards to the kits that they put into the game, they look very, very authentic and real. It doesn't it doesn't even look like that it's fake, right? So it looks incredible. And it's something that people worry about all the time. Now, I understand it for the uh, for the Xbox player's point of view that, uh, you know, that you guys don't get, or, well, we did. I used to have an Xbox as well. You don't really get an option file uh, option on the Xbox, I believe so. So with the PlayStation and being able to do that, the license isn't an issue. So I apologize for this video. You guys are going to see that they all have their little default kits, but I did actually update that. So uh, if in today's stream, we end up playing uh, the head-to-head -head version of the game and um, we do actually use this, the teams uh, to try out different formations and stuff, we'll probably do that again because in my club, it's so annoying that with the, like I said, with the formation thing, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly aggravating to deal with because... I really do think that they should allow you to use whatever, whatever formation you want and whatever tactics you want because this game is one of the best football simulators that I've ever played. After playing head-to-head -head and being able to use every specific formation and tactic that I wanted, I realized right away exactly what I wanted in this game. So for me, my play style is very passing-oriented and the one-two plays in this game are actually really effective. So for me, I needed to use uh, the 4-3-1-2. Uh, you're going to notice, and I think there's a part of this video where you're going to see exactly how my tactics are set up, right? So uh, my, my, passing, uh, my passing space between my players is short. The reason why I want it short is because of my play style. I want my players to be close together so that when I make these attacking plays, um, it's all about the one-two plays. Because I like, I like opening up someone's, uh, someone's defense by doing stuff like that, right? So being able to pass the ball around and breaking down someone's defense, make that extra run. It's really, really helpful for me. Uh, I was using I was using Juve and Real Madrid, and I tried out their default tactics, and they just they're the only the, they're the only teams that I tried out their default tactics with their formations and stuff. With Real Madrid using like the four three three and Juve using the four three three, and I just didn't like it, right? Um, and those were the games that I ended up tying because I, I felt like attacking wise I couldn't really do much, right? Because it just didn't really offer that much. So four three one two is definitely the formation for me. I loved it right away. Uh, I actually do something really cool in Pez, which is one of my, uh, I think it's uh, defensive tactics or attacking tactics, uh, which is the instructions that you have, the advanced instructions, that I tell the defensive mid to always stay back, right? And that's something that you can actually assign to your players. So if someone goes on the counterattack against me, Fernandinho is actually always there. And it's awesome because you know how in fifa sometimes you'll tell your instruction of stay back while attacking but then their work rates even if it's medium high the medium will still make them push forward a little bit in this game fernandinho is always there and it makes me feel really comfortable on the defense to ha always have him in that position so really really awesome to see right um so i do have that set up as one of my tactics i also have the other attacking tactic to be tiki taka if i really really want my team to be passing oriented um what else was there? There was also the defensive tactics. So defensive tactics, I have it set up to swarm the box always. That's my default. I want that to always be on because when someone crosses the ball into the box, I want to be able to have um, as many players inside my 18-yard box so that when a cross comes in, I can defend against it. And I noticed that that was definitely a thing I needed to do because crossing in this game is really, really effective. It's not, I wouldn't say it's overpowered because if you're good enough at defending against it, it's possible to defend against it. But because I'm still new to the game, it's still very difficult for me. Um, so 
with the defensive line, the defensive line was a big deal for me. That's the, that was the biggest game changer for me, for me to defend properly. So my defensive line is like, is at the perfect uh, length away for me to defend properly. Because in, in, in the Michael version, like I said, these managers have preset tactics, but in the head-to-head -head version of the game, you could set the tactics exactly how you want them to be, right? So I have the defensive line set up perfectly. I have how congested I want my team to be in general. So you can congest your team to be super, super narrow and all congested in the middle, or you can set up your team to be a little bit more wide if someone's really trying to utilize the wide space against your team, right? So it's really cool because in this game, if you have a secondary and third manager, you can have the secondary and third manager to have that formation, right? But then you could tell them when you switch to those formations during the game that, oh, I want my team to be more wide because that's already going to be set up that you, that's already going to be a setup that you already have, right? So... It was just incredible, man. Like when I was playing the head-to-head -head version, I I truly realized how good the gameplay actually was in this game. Another thing that really pissed me off when I was playing the gameplay, though, was my finishing. And the finishing when you get at least decent players is incredible, man. Like I was actually able to finish really nice opportunities. I still screwed up some of my attacking opportunities finishing-wise because I, I like I'm still getting used to the finishing mechanics, which, by the way, is I realize that just pressing B is the best way to score. Um, like, for instance, if you have the angle, like, right there with Douglas Costa, just shoot with B. Don't finesse it or anything like that. Finesses are only worth it uh, in really, really certain circumstances, right? But a lot of the times, I just power shot it because the way that they take the shot with the inside of their foot is already very effective, right? Uh, I also realize that shooting it across goal is the most... Uh, inconsistent way of scoring, right? So if you shoot it across goal, it's better to get that extra angle, slow down again, and then shoot the ball. So it, understanding the mechanics is really, really helpful. Also, chip shots, if you are calm enough, is probably one of the better ways to score. If you get really close to the goalkeeper and you know you don't have time to shoot it with power around him, chipping it is the best because chipping works perfectly in this game. The way that it works, the way that it comes off is very, very satisfying. So Getting used to the finishing mechanics is a very, very big deal, but even me watching my own gameplay, I realized, like, wow, like, look at the difference that it makes. Look at the passing plays that I can do with this team. It's just, it's incredible, man. It's just so much fun when you, when you have the right formation and the right tactics with your team, right? So, again, that's why I keep mentioning, man, my club is frustrating because I really think that needs to be changed in the game because it should not be set to managers. You should be able to use whatever you want in the text and informations, just like in FIFA. I would rather have really crappy players, but be able to use uh, the right formation and tactics that I want to use than to have uh, an easier chance of getting the players. Because people said that if you get, if you spend like $50 on this game, you'll already have all the really, really good players, which I understand, but I'd rather have the right formation and tactics so that when I get to the point of having good players, it feels even better. So that's just my opinion, right? Uh, so the finishing is incredible. Uh, the passing plays with the 4-3-1-2 is nice. Defensively, having the three midfielders is really nice as well because when, the, when my passing range is short, uh, being able to make all these passing plays amongst the players is really nice because you have the three center midfielders and then you have the fullbacks still kind of like pushing up a tiny bit uh, and it's just really nice, right? The cam with the two strikers for me, is the biggest deal, right? Being able to have the Cam and two strikers doing those one-two plays is just incredible, man. I absolutely love it, right? The one-two plays that I was doing with the players to open up the space, it's really cool because I actually found out this way to make a really good attacking play. So what I do, right, is if I have the Cam and he's at the top, I will tell my left striker at the bottom or my right striker at the top to make a run, I will pass it back to the center mid, and then from the center mid, I will do a first-time wide pass to my striker. And it's really, really effective to do that. It's just that my brain doesn't trigger quick enough for me to do it all the time, so it's something that I'm getting used to. Um, defensively, I was watching a tutorial from last year, which is Pez 2018, and there was this guy that I watched this tutorial, and he was teaching, uh, he was teaching you how to defend, and I was like, this is game changing for me because I was mentioning this earlier and then I completely went off topic. This is game changing for me. So when I was defending, right, I didn't like the defending in this game because I thought it was incredibly clunky, right? Um, 
I thought it was a really, really clunky experience, right? Because the defending just felt really weird. But I found out, right? And this is something that Pez do not explain well enough. Because if they explain these things, then people wouldn't think that the game feels so crappy, right? Um, so, if you super cancel while you're defending, your players move smoothly. Up, down, left, right, better, right? And, it's, and it was crazy because when I, sw when I noticed that as I was playing, I was like... Wow, I actually feel like I can defend properly because if you realize that someone's going to make a certain passing play, right, to their to their midfielder or their forward, you can actually like control your CDM perfectly to block that general area and with speed and with um with smoothness. The left and right in this game is actually really nice. I really do like it. It actually worked out really nicely, right? So, when I found out about the super cancel and being able to it's basically like L2 R2 um while you're like it's l2 r2 like if you're running but i think if i don't know i don't know if it's super cancels if you're not running so i'm not sure about that yet but when you're when you're when you're running and and holding r1 to super cancel it's just so nice man the players move so smoothly on the defense and i was actually defending better i noticed that about myself so uh, with my brain right now and getting used to the commands what i'm trying to do right now is i'm trying to get used to um I'm trying to get used to like the uh, like my brain triggering to do L R1 R2 and like the super cancel, but the second man press at the same time because second man press is really helpful. But you can't always hold second man press. You have to you have to use second man press a little bit and then and then you kind of like back off a little bit. You don't fully commit to a player unless you really know that you're gonna get the ball, just like in FIFA, right? So. Uh, those are the tactics that you guys saw right there. Those are the default ones, right? That's the attacking and the defending ones. And guys, I was I loved using Manchester United in this game, and I'll tell you guys why, man. Pogba and Lukaku are gods in this game. They are so amazing in this game, man. They play like absolute gods, man. Because in this game, I noticed, right? Physical and dribbling. Lukaku's dribbling is kind of mad, but the way that the Pez mechanics work. It doesn't bother you at all, trust me. So when I was using Lukaku, I was like, no, nah, dude, I, keep, I need to keep using Man Red because Lukaku is a beast in this game, man. His physical presence, and you know how in real life he lays the ball off to the to the other players? It just, it just works so realistically in this game, and I just loved using him, right? His finishing with his left foot, don't even get me started. It's god tier. It's just disgusting how good he is with his left foot. Um... I learned when I should finesse. I learned when I should power shoot. But you need to get to the point where you get these players. Pogba in the midfield, absolute boss, man. Wins the ball in the air. His, his dribbling, let me just try to fix this uh, little thing right here, which is not. Oh, there you go. Uh, his dribbling is incredible. His shooting is incredible. His passing is incredible. Like, I realized that when I was using players like Fred, like, the, the thing about pl using a player like Fred and stuff is that they're very usable, but. They're not, they're not the preferred players to have. And it's crazy because I don't even have those types of players yet. But I know that those aren't the type of players that I want. Kyle Walker is amazing in this game. I think I actually like him more than Valencia as a right back in this game. Um, I think the CDM, man, it's gonna be, it has to be someone like Pogba, I think, man. If he plays as my CDM and I have that defensive tactic to tell him uh, to stay back while defending, I think that's going to be like the most ideal thing to do because... In all honesty, man, he just plays like a monster. I have, I did use Conte, and Conte's, re Conte's short, but because he's so agile, like, if you super cancel with Conte, oh my god, he feels amazing, because he's so agile that he just moves left and right uh, really, really nicely, so really enjoyed using him as well when I did try out Chelsea, but Chelsea as a team in general, uh, they don't really have good players. To be honest, the only players that I really liked using in their team was Eden Hazard and, uh, and Conte. Uh, Willian... William was okay, but Eden Hazard and Conte, those two were just destroying people, man. So, I really enjoyed using them. Um, Ander Herrera from Manchester United isn't too bad either. He's, he's okay. He doesn't play too badly. Um, who else was there? Alexis Sanchez was incredibly underwhelming for me. Like, his dribbling is nice, but... Again, I noticed that the physical and dribbling is a big thing, so that's, like, what it's going to be about in this game. Um, and with Alexis Sanchez, like, he didn't... He never won... A physical battle against people and you know that being a thing isn't really helpful in my opinion when you can't win a physical battle because it's just it's just not useful right it you need to be able to win those battles to be able to go through on goal and to pass people and you know when he doesn't have that 
it's just not ideal to use him, right? Like, I don't know how to explain it because Eden Hazard doesn't have physical capabilities, but his dribbling and his speed on the ball is so fast that it just doesn't seem like it's a very big deal, right? So, I don't know, just... It's, it's weird. I was using Manchester City, and when I was using them with the 4-3-1-2, Fernandinho as a CDM is actually really solid. So again, I put that tactic on him so that he can stay back while attacking. Um, and like I said before, he does that role. He plays that role really nicely. So, uh, But with Manchester City, I was using Sterling as the cam. And Sterling Sterling's really fun to use in this game. Obviously, he doesn't have the physical, physical uh, presence either. But he's still really, really good in this game. I do enjoy using him. I actually have him in my, my club team, so... Um, the fact that I can use him as a cam is really cool. So I'm probably going to do that and replace him with Coutinho whenever I can. And if I get the 4-3-1-2 in my club, I'm probably going to switch between Simeone, uh, Tequinho Suarez, and um, Tequinho Suarez, and who was the other striker? Gabriel Jesus. So decent in that position so far. My center midfielders are bad, so I need to upgrade my center midfielders and my other center back. Thiago Silva is amazing. But I need to get a better center back. Also, the right back, because Patrick Van Anholt and Gail Clichy aren't too bad. Uh, but my right backs being Saar and Zabaleta definitely need to uh, improve those two guys because they're not necessarily ideal to have in the team. Uh, my goalie is is one of the inform cards. And if he gains affinity, then he'll be fine in my team. I think I'll like him a lot. Uh, but other than that, uh, a lot of improvements to be made. I hope that... For my club today, I hope that they release a manager that is a good 4-3-1-2. Because if they don't, I'll probably just play the head-to-head -head again. Because like I said earlier, man, formation and tactics make such a big deal. Like my, my record right now, I think, on my club is like is like 25, like maybe like 6 ties and then like 15 losses. And like I'm telling you guys this right now, man. Like I would say 85% because of 15% these guys played well anyway so it would have been a tough match regardless but i still think i would have done well against them use your coins you know the coins that you get in the beginning of the my club experience use those coins um use those coins to to buy managers don't don't do it on the coins because you can do matchmaking to, to match your star rating so if you're using shit players just use the shit players because you'll come up against shit players as well. So I'm actually even contemplating restarting my, my club just so I can have bad players again. Just so I can get the formation that I want. Because I'd rather have that than these informs that I have in my team. Because by the way, I don't even like Simeone and all these guys. So it wouldn't even be worth tr using them right now. So uh, if, I had the, if I had the coins, again, I would uh, definitely 100% buy it on a manager first and then go from there. So if you get a good... Four three one two with with like good uh, supporting range, uh, a good. This is important compactness and defensive line. Because if your defensive line is too high, people can do easy wide passes against you. If your compactness is too wide, they can do easy wide passes in the middle against you. If your compactness is perfect, you can do you can easily defend against people. So it's all about getting the exact formation and tactics that you want. I wish that the managers. Okay, if you bought new managers and they were formation oriented. That's fine. But when you make it your tactics, it's incredibly frustrating in my opinion. I don't think that the tactics should be associated to the manager. I think it's, it should just be the formation and the tactics you said to whatever you want to. And I understand that the Pez guys are going to say, oh, but that's not the characteristic of the manager. But in my experience of playing football simulators, after playing head-to-head, -head, it's a better game mode because I can switch the formation and tactics, right? I enjoy this game more and I can give it more of a chance with the specific game mechanics because I can do that. When you don't allow your new players to switch their tactics, you are hindering your performance of growing your game, in my opinion, right? Because if a newcomer comes to your game and they buy your game and they're like, wait, so I can't switch the formation or tactics because I have to buy a manager, which costs coins right now. It doesn't cost G People say that, oh, you could buy them a GPs. You can't yet. When you're a newcomer in the game, you can't yet. They're not available. You can buy the shitty ones for GPs, but you can't, want, you can't buy the good ones uh, for, the coin, for the gaming points, right? So that's something I need to put up there because people kept saying, like, you could buy it with the gaming points, but you can't yet. You can only buy it with the coins, right? So if you guys start off the My Club experience, start it with coins. And I'm telling you this, guys, right now, you will enjoy this game if you get the right formation and tactics. The players are going to be shit. Your beginning players, they're going to be shit. It's going to happen, right? But if you get the right formation and tactics, that's where you'll enjoy the game. Because then the My Club experience becomes more fun. Again, I still think contracts are too expensive. They're ridiculous because you, you earn 1,300 or 1,400 
uh, gaming points for playing a game and you have to spend like 2500 on a 10 match contract for a 2600 which is just ridiculous but um yeah once you get the good players in your team and once you have the right formation and tactics which takes forever in this game right it just takes way too long uh because again like i said if you have bad players but you have the right formation and tactics, that's good enough for you to enjoy the game. Because, yeah, you're going to notice that the player's dribbling and stuff is going to be bad, but that's in time you will upgrade your team. And like I said, I've actually been contemplating uh, restarting my My Club just so I can get, uh, just so I can get like, mediocre players, but the right formation and tactics that I want, right? So I have realized that. And also another thing that a lot of people mentioned uh, to me in the previous videos are that people were telling me, you should just farm, you should just play the offline. No one should ever be forced to play the offline if you want to play the online only, right? So it's the same thing with FIFA, right? Should, you should, squad battle should be there as an option, right? It's, it's really annoying when they make their offline game modes uh, louder than their online ones. And give me a second because that's going to be really loud right now. So if you guys hear a background noise, I do apologize for that. So I don't know. That's just like my opinion when it comes to all this stuff, but dudes man i when i play the head-to-head -head, like i said the mechanics you you can truly see how good this game is gameplay wise i'm still really rough in the defending like uh, i'm really rough in and i think i do i do think that there's two things wrong with this game the interceptions at times like your players just go over the ball and it's really really infuriating uh and also uh with the defending i do need to uh, uh, like understand when i need to actually tackle and when i need to super cancel but uh the game it's a lot of fun head-to-head. -head. Again, once you find the formation and tactics you like, you will enjoy this game more. But it's going to take a while for you to get to that point. But that is going to conclude the video for today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, please drop a thumbs up on the video. It definitely helps out the channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.